So we just finished tricuspid valve stenosis, pulmonary valve stenosis, subpulmonary and suprapulmonary pathophysiology. Now we will move to the uh, branch pulmonary artery stenosis uh, pathophysiology. So this is the pulmonary artery tree again. Left pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery, and the pulmonary valve with the main pulmonary artery. So our area of interest is here and here, whether proximal or distal, proximal or distal. So the branch pulmonary arteries are blood vessels. They are no more cardiac chambers. They do not hypertrophy. They may dilate or become small, either or. When we have significant branch pulmonary artery stenosis, see the lumen is significantly narrowed for whatever cause of stenosis uh, congenital whether this is in an association with lesions or in isolation, whether this is bilateral or unilateral, it can affect significantly the lumen where the blood flows. This is what we call PPS or peripheral PPS. peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis of variable degrees. You can imagine so many combi combinations and so much degrees of such stenosis. And again, I said it could be unilateral or bilateral. Again, we will classify it into mild, moderate, severe, unilateral or bilateral to talk about the pathophysiological effect of such disease. Mild PPS is again like any mild stenosis in most of the parts of the heart will usually cause no effect. What do we mean by, by mild gradients or mild PPS? We said before that the pressure here is normally around 20. If there's a gradient between the main pulmonary artery and the distal branch pulmonary artery beyond the obstruction of around 15, to 30 or 25, let's say, millimeter mercury mean gradient difference, which means if I add this 15, this could be here, let's say, uh, maximum 45. And here it will be uh, 45 uh, and we have a gradient of 25. So here is around 20, okay, the gradient here now is around 25 millimeter mercury and for sure above 20 where we really consider it uh, mild, then this is a mild stenosis. Whether it's unilateral or bilateral, it, there is some effect, there is some cumulative effect. We'll talk about unilateral, mild PPS. Usually it does not cause any pathophysiological effect. And there is something called normal or physiologic peripheral pulmonary stenosis that we see early in life, immediately after birth, that usually resolves completely beyond or before the age of uh, six months. Pathological PPS, when it's mild, it does not cause any hemodynamic effect if it is unilateral. But if it is bilateral, let's say we have a gradient here of like 25 
and another gradient here of 25, this pressure may not remain 45. It may go up to 60 millimeter mercury. And then what really concerns us is because of the cumulative uh, pressure gradient effect, then the RV pressure, RV systolic pressure, will also be high. And then we'll start seeing uh, some effect of mild PPS. So mild PPS, if unilateral, no effect, no hemodynamic effect, except mild elevation of the uh, pulmonary artery and the right uh, ventricular systolic pressure. If it is bilateral fixed obstruction, then we do see a moderate or slightly more than moderate, usually moderate effect on the right ventricular uh, uh, systolic pressure and the MPA. So if we start seeing moderate PPS, see the difference now? A bilateral mild can give you a moderate effect, while a unilateral mild does not give you that much effect. If we, talk, we said 15 to 25, for a, a mean gradient difference between MPA and the branch pulmonary artery for mild PPS. What if the mean gradient is anything between 25 to 40 millimeter mercury difference between the MPA and the branch pulmonary artery? So, if it is, let's say, 40 plus 20, then this now will become 60. See? So this is now 60 millimeter mercury. The gradient is 40 between the main pulmonary artery and the branch pulmonary artery uh, uh, stenosis. Again, in moderate PPFs, usually there is not much of significant pathophysiological effect. Why? Because as in, in mild, the pressure does elevate, but the right ventricle can take it. The cardiac output can be maintained, although there is an obstruction. We talked about that having bilateral mild may make it moderate stenosis and having bilateral moderate stenosis let's say these two are existing not just one of them actually this pressure may even go higher and become above 70 millimeter mercury and then it's now turned into severe uh, effect on the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery pressure we have now significant severe elevation because of bilateral moderate stenosis. This is quite important to understand. So I'll say it again, mild PPS alone on a unilateral uh, side with a normal other side usually causes no effect and not much elevation of the pressure and it is well uh, tolerated except that the lung receiving that stenosis may be slightly underperfused, not significantly under, so slightly underperfused. If we have bilateral mild, we may have a moderate effect on the right ventricle. If we have bilateral moderate, we will have a severe effect on the right uh, uh, ventricle. And that's really what concerns us because that's the pump that's pumping against this obstruction. And what if we have severe bilateral or unilateral pulmonary, uh, uh, peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis? Then the gradient or the pressure gradient between is anything between 45 millimeter mercury to 60 millimeter mercury. So if we apply that, 20 plus 60, this number will become 80. So again, you start seeing significant obstruction. 
And if it was bilateral, let's say this is 60 and this is another 60 here, this number can go up to 100 to 120 millimeter mercury. Extremely severe. And that will be the right ventricular systolic pressure. So in PPS, one of the lung, if it is a good lung, if it is good size, if it has no stenosis, it actually can take most of the cardiac output and the pressure, and this will not elevate. In such sense, mild PPS unilateral is asymptomatic. Moderate PPS unilateral is asymptomatic. And even severe PPS unilateral can be asymptomatic, although some of these patients actually complain of uh, dyspnea uh, on exertion. And when I say symptomatic, I mean by clinical. And here we are here, we really talk about pathophysiological. So let's agree, in mild PPS, not much pathophysiological effect, even on both uh, lungs. The only thing, if it is bilateral, it can give us moderate elevation of right systolic uh, pressure. With that, we may have mild right ventricular hypertrophy. We will maintain the cardiac output. We will not have significant um, uh, endastolic pressure elevation, and we will not have uh, venous congestion on the right side. When it is bilateral moderate PPS, then we may have severe elevation of the right ventricular pressure in the range of more than 65, more like 70 to 80 millimeter mercury, then we do expect right ventricular hypertrophy. We may expect right ventricular and diastolic pressure high. The cardiac output will be st still maintained on the expense of RVH and elevation of uh, end diastolic pressure. We will not see significant venous congestion or uh, RV failure. When it is bilateral, severe PPS, peripheral pulmonary stenosis, then the pulmonary artery pressure will be extremely high in the range of 100, 120. And in that, we will see significantly high, very high right ventricular systolic pressure, significant right ventricular hypertrophy, we will see elevation of the right ventricular endastolic pressure. We will see significant venous congestion if it is continued for enough time to give us some sort of RV failure. Not necessarily the florid complete RV failure with zero function, but a form of RV failure with congestion, right atrial dilatation, tricuspid valve will start leaking, we will have tricuspid valve regurgitation, the pulmonary valve will also start leaking, we will have because of the high pressure here, this valve cannot maintain in systole, uh, in, in diastole, the elevated pressure and will also start leaking. And in that stage, it will add to the ventricular hypertrophy. It will add to it ventricular dilatation. And this is really the worst stage because in that stage, we start losing the strong RVH that can push through a severe obstruction we will also start seeing the endastolic pressure being high, the venous congestion, and we should, that should not be um, left to reach such a stage. We interfere in PPS even if they are uh, moderate, especially if they are bilateral. So to sum up again, branch pulmonary artery stenosis are usually well tolerated, mild to moderate, and even severe if they are unilateral because the other lung will take over. Just a caveat there, when it's moderate to severe, 
the pathophysiological effect will appear on the lung receiving the blood through the stenotic area. It may become smaller volume, less perfused, even to the extent it may become hypoplastic. It may actually even lead to hypoplasia of the pulmonary veins of that same lung. And that's quite a bad effect. So even if it's unilateral, then the effect, uh, but it is uh, severe, the effect will not be on the right ventricle. It will be on the lung receiving and on the size of the uh, pulmonary artery receiving that diminuted or less blood because of the severe stenosis. The major issue with PPS, it is when they are bilateral. Bilateral mild PPS will give you a moderate effect on the pulmonary artery, maintaining the cardiac output on the expense of an elevated right systolic pressure with a usually normal EDP and no venous congestion and not much tricuspid valve regurgitation or pulmonary valve regurgitation. But when it becomes moderate or severe bilateral PPS, then we will have significantly elevated uh, RV systolic pressure and pulmonary artery, pulmonary valve regurgitation, significant right ventricular systolic pressure elevation, right ventricular hypertrophy, elevation of the right ventricular and diastolic pressure, and late stage venous congestion and RV failure. This is the outcome of PPS uh, in, a, in a nutshell, as they say, and I hope uh, I made it uh, uh, clear and somewhat easy to, to understand. From this, we will move to the next obstructive lesion, but this time we will be going to the left side.